left up for hours, Jesse's account was immediately locked down and set to private. I remember this. One caller on his I daily JLP show broadcast. What's up, taters? This is Tree from TreeOfLogic.com. So I'm going to do a response video to the Jesse Lee Peterson documentary. Uh, this is where they're trying to actually so-called expose him. I I'm just going to let you know right now, this is a nothing burger. This is just uh, Milo Yiannopoulos and, and some other guy. They're trying to get their come up. Uh, ever since Milo had a huge fall from grace, uh, he's trying to throw anything at the wall to see what would stick. And now he's doing this whole thing of he's no longer gay. <laughs> If you believe that, dude, I got some crypto to sell you for real. Good price, good price. So Milo is not straight, okay? He's, there's not that. There's no way in the heaven or hell that he's straight. And uh, and uh, come to find out with this whole thing that he was really never married to his so-called black husband. So that found out that was a big old lie. Anyway. Uh, so I do believe that this was done with malicious intent and this is going to lead to nothing. Nothing's going to happen to Jesse. Jesse's not going to lose any uh, sponsors. Jesse's not going to lose his spot on his radio show. People are not going to abandon Jesse. Jesse is, first of all, Jesse is still loved. And truth be told, people don't care what your sexuality is uh, as long as you're doing good for people. Now, do I believe that Jesse is is uh, could be gay? Yeah, sure, I can believe, it. especially what he said about women climaxing is equivalent to uh, behaving like men. Somebody who says something like that or don't know nothing about a woman's body. <laughs> But Jesse's loved. Jesse is adored. And we like Jesse. Jesse makes us laugh. And believe it or not, anybody that makes you laugh get a pass. So let's go ahead and watch this. And and, and uh, I'm going to respond accordingly. You may talk about the men of Gideon. Talk about the men of song. This is Mahalia Jackson. Well, I think we all died to win. That's no Jerry. That's no way. Because she fits the man so they took um okay i just realized what they did this is mahalia jackson and they took mahalia jackson's song amazing grace I, although this is this song right here is not amazing grace the reason why i know about her um um uh, mahalia jackson is because my grandmama used to play her religiously and i do believe jesse comes from that age so I, when I hear Mahalia Jackson, I automatically think about my grandmama. So instead of uh, saying amazing grace, they, they named it amazing disgrace. Creep! I'm changed. And, so I, and I don't saying, have any skeleton in my closet. You're saying from that you're a 100% saint changed. now? I'm not saying that I'm a saint, but I don't do those things. In the early 1990s, Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson began his ministry as a student of Roy Masters, a British-born talk radio personality and hypnotist. Peterson and Masters promoted a similar system of meditation and theology, a system that includes rejecting the Holy Trinity and our Blessed Lord's divinity. Say what you want about Jesse. Jesse, st Lord and mercy, them sandals, Jesse. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesse need to put some lotion on his feet. You look like you've been kicking some powder. Uh, anyway, uh, Jesse looks good for his age. I'll tell you that much. He don't have a belly anymore. He's been going to the gym, so he's slimmed down. So uh, whatever he's been doing with himself, he's been keeping... He I know black don't crack, but he's really been uh, keeping this youthful look. But thanks to the feckless and spiritually absent bishops, Jesse's theological errors didn't keep him from gaining tens of thousands of Catholic and patriotic followers. Jesse's draw for conservatives was his commentary against the Marxist group Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter, um, radical um, so-called social justice warriors, they were chanting, what do we want? Dead cops, when do we want it now? Pins in the blanket, fry them like bacon. 
and people went out and started killing cops and everything. Back up! Back up! Exploiting many angry American men's desires for a stable family life, Jesse would directly call out feminists for their role in destroying the family as well. Okay, I, I object this exploiting. Uh, I've interviewed Jesse. I've actually talked to Jesse, I think, three times. And a lot, one time I just strictly just interviewed him, even though like the last 10 minutes of the interview, it turned out where he was trying to interview me. Jesse, not one time has he exploited uh, the, the rights that are violated by men. He does not exploit men. And, and I got a funny feeling they're going to use this type of language to because they have a nothing burger here they're going to use this type of charged up language like oh manipulation oh he did this he was a predator how if you if if feminism is actually uh going against men then how is how is it exploiting men by making them aware and trying to work around feminism these people are just well, let me see if i can rewind that just a little bit more I don't see this as exploiting men. This is that that's just stupid language you're using to just charge because you have a nothing burger. You're going to use language like that. Family life. Jesse would directly exploiting cops and everything. Exploiting many angry American men's desires for a stable family life, Jesse would directly call out feminists for their role in destroying the family as well. Well, it's true though. They they are they are. As a matter of fact, <laughs> uh, now uh, and I was talking about this on my show today. In in white households, single mothers are beginning to be a popular thing. It's growing tremendously. Uh, in white households. So this is a problem. Single motherhood is a problem where you have fathers that are not in the home or fathers who are being abandoned, who are um, ostracized. And you have some fathers who abandon their, their children because they're just little boys. But I, I do believe that this is a problem. So there's no exploiting angry men. I just reject this premise, actually. Sexism is a made-up lie. And it's been made up by women who hate men, who hate the family, who hate the unborn child. The 73-year-old even visited the church militant studio in March, when senior executive producer Michael Voris answered his questions about Catholicism. Did Jesus just rise from the dead in spirit, but that's or did he, his body come out also? He was Maybe his body came out, I don't know. But I know well, that's a big rose, deal. <laughs> he rose in the spirit. That's what no, he rose in the body. Why, why I want to make that? So but he clear. rose in the body. You can't say he didn't walk out of the walk out of the tomb on well, Sunday. And from what we knew at the time, Jesse was an ardent opponent of homosexuality in and outside the church, and presented himself as such. The spirit of homosexuality. Okay, I'm just want to say anything dealing with with religion in reference to Jesus, whether he rose from the spirit or body. I I have no comment on that. I'm agnostic sexuality is of their father the devil it's not them the person it's the spirit that made a home in them and it came from them overreacting to some sort of a situation in life whether it's from someone uh, uh, messing with them when they were kids or overreacting to an angry mother because you become like what you hate but shortly after the March interview friends of his came to us with a different story these stories first came to light when Jesse's former co-host and mm, this this picture looks sus. <laughs> this picture looks photoshopped. This picture looks really photoshopped, and the reason I said it's like right here looks transimposed right here. This does not, and it's very grainy. Where you, yeah, one, okay, let me just say this. This picture is Photoshop, but two, what if it's, let's say, for instance, it's not, I'll, I'll play devil's advocate. Let's say, for instance, the, the picture is not Photoshop. So what if this is a, a guy hugging on the back of Jesse, could be playing around and be like, yeah, giving him a fatherly hug. This is not a smoking gun whatsoever. 
And I think they're reaching so far in this video that they have to just, they have to get all these circumstantial, really, really weak circumstantial uh, evidence to sit up here and say, Jesse Gay, Jesse Gay, Jesse Gay. But you don't have no actual gunfire like audio ver audio tape or a videotape. You don't have any of that concrete evidence that's going to show that Jesse is in fact participating in, in this type of behavior. But this, I don't buy this picture. This picture looks Photoshop. An alleged decade long gay lover exposed him. 61 year old Patrick Rooney has known Jesse for nearly 30 years, dating back to roughly 1992. Everybody know Patrick Rooney, one of the smartest white men on this side of heaven. The two were so close that Jesse was the minister at his wedding and the pastor at his baptism, long before Rooney claimed... Whoa, whoa, whoa what? Hold on. <laughs> oh, no! He... I hate when these DL guys... Oh, my God. All right, all right, hold on close that Jesse was the minister at his wedding and the pastor at his baptism, long before Rooney claimed any homosexual activities began. Right around that time, I also had started a, a TV show. I was doing a public access TV show in LA and uh, with a friend of mine who uh, had uh, gotten off heroin and, w and wanted to, he asked me to be involved in the show to help uh, other people get off. I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not even paying attention to what he's saying. I'm just saying to myself, you're gay, you married a woman, knowing you're gay, and I'm supposed to take you seriously? You're a liar. You're a deceiver. You lost all credibility. I'm just going to let you guys know right now, automatically, I, and I'm not going to take anything he says seriously, because the fact is that he's been gay, and he married a woman. You know, Sarah? And I wonder how long that marriage last. And did it marry? Why did it? Why did you guys get divorced? Why did the marriage break up? Like, I really would like to know your secrets. You want to put Jesse on blast? I want to know all, everything about you now, because now you don't hold no credibility. I don't like when gay men pretend to be straight and they marry uh, women and don't tell the women that they're either bisexual or gay. I hate that. That's just, that's just ultimate. You're, you're starting a relationship on a lie and you're getting married under a lie and you're being deceptive. That's deceiving someone to the ultimate level of just ridiculousness. And, and I think you're POS for that. Really. Off drugs and things like that. So we started the show and one of our first guests was Jesse and another gentleman from bond. So we did a couple of shows with them. And from that time forward, right after the show happened, Jesse and, uh, and I talked in the green room, you know, backstage. And right off the bat, he started asking me stuff. Jesse's very forward with his questioning and things like that. So he actually asked me right after that show, uh, are you gay? Rooney's characterization shows that Jesse allegedly used similar grooming tactics as other homo predators. Asking somebody if you're gay is not a grooming tactic, you inbreds. That is not if asking somebody if you are groom if you are gay is not a grooming ta technique. It's what I'm saying they, they got nothing here, so they got to use language to get you charged up, like you know, like uh, oh he's uh, I forgot the word they they used earlier, but it's like now you're going to oh that's just one of his grooming techniques. That's not, asking somebody that sexuality is not a, gr a grooming technique, idiot. Guys, these guys lie. So he actually much. asked me right after that show, uh, are you gay? Rooney's characterization shows that Jesse allegedly used similar grooming tactics as other homo predators, like Saginaw priest Father Robert DeLand, who asked similar questions when preying on a young man in 2017. To discover that you have some gay tendencies is a fine thing. To discover that... To discover that you have some gay tendencies is a fine thing. Now, notice how that's totally different than saying, are you gay? Because I can ask that. I, ask, I can ask that of any guy or any girl. I see, I let, are you gay? Or if I care. It's a lot of times I, if they're gay, they'll let me know. But if there's somebody who's a very attractive and he has a beautiful body, uh, I actually did. I think the last time I asked somebody if there was a man, as a matter of fact, and he was in my gym Dude had a body like Adonis. Oh, my gosh. And he he was so 
well groomed. I just had, you know, while we're having a conversation, I said, I don't mean to be forward, but are you gay? Did I groom him? And by the way, I was right. He is, he's gay. And I was like, he has to be gay. He just takes care of his body so well. And I mean, everything about him, his hair, his face, his skin was on fleek, baby. Everything was on fleek. And I was just impressed. Something so beautiful could not be straight, honey. <laughs> so I asked him if he was gay. And he was like, yeah, I am. That's not grooming. So you see, asking somebody, is you gay, to sit up here and say, to discover that you have some gay tendencies is a fine thing. That's grooming because it's like, it's okay. It's like we're among friends here. You can trust me. I will not judge you. This is grooming. Asking a flat out, straight out question is not grooming, idiots. You have some gay tendencies is a fine thing mm. because then you don't have to be so confused. Right. Do you feel less confused? Mm. Do you? Yeah. After Jesse discovered. Yeah, that was grooming. Do you feel less confused? good because I un like I understand you nobody understands you better you can be you can be yourself around me I won't judge you yeah that's that's how that grooming works but asking somebody straight up questions that's not grooming but see he you see how they're trying to conflate they are kind of trying to conflate whoever that other uh, guy was with Jesse they are trying to self-impose that person onto Jesse where they don't have Jesse saying none of these things but they're like oh see this guy said it so Jesse's gonna say it <laughs> hey Milo try better idiot this is garbage and it's not gonna do anything Rooney's same sex attraction his relationship with Jesse was taken to the next level bit by bit Jesse began edging him closer and closer to sin once we once he moved up there to do the show we stayed in the same house Jesse would kind of do some things kind of horseplay and stuff like that with me and at times he would uh, do stuff where he would like grab me and then we'd kind of wrestle around a little bit and I'd feel his you know private parts against me and he did that more than once so it wasn't like an accidental thing he would kind of do it and then I even mentioned it like you know what's that or whatever and he would kind of play around and joke about it fast forward to 2005 and Jesse was ready to make his final move we did a uh, conference with them called moral reconstruction which is Kind of ironic uh, now that we're sitting here talking about something something else it's called moral reconstruction we did no that credibility. that this first guy has no conference was i believe in 2005 and uh, we did a follow-up conference in 2006 with them as well and i went with jesse to uh, washington dc uh, for this conference uh, i was a fundraiser at the time and so we did fundraising i was i was part of the conference while we were at the conference um, we stayed in uh, Virginia, you know, near, near D.C. So uh, we were sitting on the bed together, and um, all of a sudden he turned to me, just looked, me, looked at me, and he said, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And he said it in a, no in a video, tone that was no really insistent. No audio tape. And I've never it's seen this tone from him this before. It was like kind this, of scary. Uh, it kind of scared me. Like, this one person's oh, I, testimony. Do do? I don't believe him, though. I knew what he meant, and then I told him, well, okay. And at first I'm scared and I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm playing along here. It kind of threw me off my game, I guess, in a way. I what? think later I realized that's kind of something that people do sometimes. It's, it's like the devil works in a certain way by intimidating you. And it throws you off your normal game. And so he said, what do you want to do? And he's like, okay, I'm scared. And then uh, I said, I told him what I want to do. I, I mentioned sex acts, you know, that we... Wait, wait, wait. Off your normal game. And so he said, what do you want to do? And he's like, okay, I'm scared. And then uh, I said, I told him what I want to do. I, I mentioned sex acts, you know, that, we, that he knew about that I had already talked to him about that I was interested in. And Jesse said, what do you want to do? And then he comes out of the, out of the blue with, well, I said I wanted to do certain type of sex acts. And then he said that he discussed this with Jesse already? Hold on. And then uh, I said, I told him what I want to do. I, I mentioned sex 
acts, you know, that, we, that he knew about that I had already talked to him about that I was interested in. Jesse, that he was interested in certain type of homosexual active sexual activities with him, and then he want to act like this is the first time they ever brought this up in bed. So they had this discussion already. Jesse, accordingly, I like I said, I don't believe anything he's saying. But Jesse brings this up and say, "What do you want to do?" Instead of saying, "Hey, you want to play some checkers or you want to go out to eat." Uh, let's do a couple of uh, freaky dicky dookie love stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what the hell? Like, this is... Dude, this guy has no credibility for real, dude. She's and so next thing you know, he's ripping his clothes off and coming at me, basically. But I thought you said he was laying beside you. I'm catching the lies, dude. I told you, you guys no credibility. I'm catching the lies. And I did the same. Took my clothes off. And next thing you know, we're, we're fully at it, having... Uh, not getting into detail here, but basically full-on uh, sexual act. Why you were married. That's what I'm saying. You were married to a woman. Jesse's not married. And yet still, you're the, you, Jesse's the bad guy right here. Dude, forget this guy. Rooney's recollections show that Jesse mirrored Deland's sexual advances almost identical. Once again, they're trying to conflate this Robert Deland with Jesse. Jesse's never been to prison for any of this stuff. Jesse's been never been caught for any of them. They're like, here's Robert Deland, and Robert Deland is just like Jesse. Jesse, Jesse Lee Peterson is just like Robert Deland. See the things that Robert Deland does, Jesse Lee Peterson does. So stupid. Authentically. I love you. Love you too. I know. What are we gonna do? And here's the thing, I don't understand. They have to show this guy to say to sit up here and act like this is something that Jesse would do. But I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people are low IQ. A lot of people are low IQ. And they will not see that, oh, well, this is not Jesse Lee Peterson. This is a Robert Gallen guy. This has nothing to do with Jesse. This really doesn't have anything to do with Jesse. But a lot of people are not that smart. And, and, and here's the deal. Even if they're not that smart, like, again, they're not, they don't care if Jesse's gay or not. Do. Uh, no, what are we going to do? Rooney's description shows that after their sexual encounter, Jesse began intertwining his private homosexualism with blasphemy. After we had just done our the first sexual act, and then ever since then, he told me that once we did this, I was born again. This, I don't uh, this that. sounds crazy, but this is the I don't absolute truth. That. This is a he lie. said that I was I, you're lying. Born again. He would remind me of that through the years. Following being born again, Rooney contends that his sodomitic relationship with Peterson went on for roughly 10 years. Until Rooney... 10 years, no pictures, except for this this, this so-called, uh, um, this picture that's photoshopped. So that's the only picture that you can show of your relationship. No pictures, no love letters, no texts, no uh, emails, no nothing. No, no, 10 years. You've been... So called in this relationship with Jesse for 10 years, no emails, no love letters, no hand, no, no gifts, no texts, no phone calls. Also, back then they had ants machines, so therefore he could have, Jesse could have left a nice ants machine message for you. You ain't got none of that. It's just your word. Blah, blah, blah. Jesse did this to me. Blah, 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 blah. We were lovers. I don't believe this guy. This guy is getting paid. Um, to, to say this stuff because Milo think he's going to get a cash cow and Milo you're a piece of shit I swear decided to come clean to his wife and son my son oh you had a son oh my god oh no oh no man oh my god dude this is a oh that boy is probably traumatized and his mother you married knowing that you're gay you married her and you had a kid by her I hate people like this, dude. I really do. Was really angry. My son was mostly angry at me. He should Because he had Jesse on such a pedestal. He, he, my son had Jesse on such a pedestal, he literally thought Jesse could walk on water. We got on a phone call. We talked to Jesse. And as soon as we brought it up with, with, a, with my son on the phone call, Jesse denied it. And I said, Jesse, you're a liar. You're lying. You know, this, you know you're lying. And he finally came out and admitted to my son that he, he, 
he did that. Where's the sun? I, that's another lie. Here's the deal. How is it that if Jesse actually admitted it to your son, why isn't your son on here actually telling everybody that Jess, that's true? This is what I said. This guy is a liar. He looks like he a meth head or maybe a crackhead. I don't know. It could be both. But the fact is, is that you're going to say, you're speaking from a third person. You're speaking from hearsay. You're not credible. You're just, you're, you're, you, once again, you start off as a liar and you have deceived so many people that loved you. You're not credible, dude. Rooney later moved to Florida to get away from Jesse. But according to Rooney, Jesse couldn't handle the relationship ending, offering him several bribes to get him back to LA. Where's the proof for the bribes? It's typical for homo predators. <laughs> Jesse did this, Jesse did that. Do you got some evidence? Well, no, I ain't got no evidence for it, but Jesse did it. No. <laughs> Oh my God. Jesse offered you bribes, but you don't have any evidence that he offered you bribes. ...to try and cover their tracks using a cornucopia of strategies to shut people up. How? In the case of Father DeLand, it was now deceased Saginaw Bishop Joseph Sistone, who remained silent on DeLand's abuse for years. Once again, what does Father DeLand have anything to do with Jesse? You know what I'm saying? You know what this is. It's like comparing. Let me use a, a good comparison here. It's like comparing. Um, well, let me see somebody I don't like. Ben Shapiro. Okay. You're trying to compare Ben Shapiro to uh, Marilyn Manson. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, Marilyn Manson wore black pants and because he used those black pants he did some very vile things to women well because of that let's watch that and then i want you to understand ben shapiro also wear black pants that that's uh that's not the perfect example okay but that's the one i could think of the top of my head they're, they're trying to you know no you cannot sit up here and say that what this person did is the same as jesse you got all this information to see who this uh father delan or whatever his name is is guilty of doing very wicked things to 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 his congregation and to and to men but you don't have that hardcore proof of jesse lee peterson doing that not only that, though, but Jesse Lee Peterson didn't get arrested for that and is not in jail for that. This man is. While serving as an auxiliary bishop in Philadelphia in 1994, Sistone allegedly watched as documents containing names of up to 64 suspected sex abusers were has shredded, to do with Jesse. earning him the nickname Bishop Shredder among the U.S. This has none. To, I once again, I want you to understand this has nothing to do with Jesse. Has none to do. I don't. They they need fillers in this because they have a nothing burger. This is there's all this is is just hearsay. There's no credible evidence in here that's actually implicating or or actually that's connecting Jesse to any of these accusations. Nothing. They have nothing. Bishops, according to Rooney, for Jesse and those loyal to him. The strategy was to bully and silence all victims and witnesses speaking up. Jesse did throw me under the bus, basically, and other people that, that did anything like that, and still does. If no evidence. Anybody comes up with it, they'll, they'll keep anybody off the You're air. You're talking about other victims? Well, uh, yeah, other victims. Uh, and he'll make sure that if anybody talks about these things, calls up his show or does anything like that, they were not going to get through on the show. Patrick explained how he... Well, a lot of people then can't get through on the show. I mean, Jesse has a screening process where a lot of people just want to, uh, he want to cut down on a lot of angry black women who want to call him a coon on the show. So they cut down a lot of people on the show. By the way, there's something wicked about this guy's look. He has that sunken place look. At <laughs> He's not credible. I'm just sorry. Just Easy not. it was for Jesse to discredit victims, given Bond's history of seeking out troubled young men. A lot of the people that Jesse brings around him are troubled young men. So... <laughs> Yes, because he's a counselor. This is what men who counsel me, little young men, he's a father figure to these young men. So what? It's like, also, also, here's something else. If Jesse was the predator that you guys 
claim him to be, there would be some young men who would come out and put him on blast already. We have already had this happen with two ministers in Georgia, two black ministers who were uh, uh, condemning uh, homosexuality on a pulpit end up that they were having uh, relationships with very young. They were legal young, but I'm talking about like 18, 19. I think the oldest was 21 men, year old men. And these men came out and put those two. Uh, one was a bishop and one was a, a, re a regular old reverend. I can't actually that reverend died of AIDS as a matter of fact. And I cannot think of his name right now. Some people will probably know what I'm talking about, but it's it's here in Georgia. The one who died of AIDS was the one was the most recent one. Uh, well, he wasn't recent; it was several years ago. Uh, he died of AIDS, but he had uh, had relations with a young with a young males, and those young males put him on blast. There's all these men who are going after Jesse. These are older men, older men. So if Jesse was who you guys say he is. How come none of the younger men are putting him on blast? How come none of them have come out and said, oh, yeah, Jesse did this, Jesse did that, Jesse did this, blah, 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 blah. That has not happened. So I just want to say, and, and y'all making it seem like, oh, well, older men should not counsel and mentor younger men. He has a men group, idiot. He helps men who never had fathers. And from what I'm seeing, he's doing a very good job. But see, Mala Yiannopoulos never had a daddy that was active in his life. That's why he's so messed up in the head, very fucked up individual. So this is the reason why he's doing all this. A lot of these guys don't have good father figures, so they want to lash out at Jesse. Right? Have drug problems, right? Some of them been in jail. Yes. So it's pretty easy to discredit a guy who's been on drugs, maybe in jail or something like that. It's pretty pretty rotten thing no it's not if he does if 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 that said person can have good evidence of voice recordings actual uh hidden camera recordings right now it's easy to get somebody on camera and to show what they really about yet still that has not come out all we got is here saying your word which is not credible beginning last november rooney began writing a collection of blog posts hinting at jesse's predation leading him to a shocking discovery after I published these articles, I found out from a young man, a very credible young man, that Jesse was fooling around with this young man. That young man was 30-year-old Samuel Arambula, a more recent... 30-year-old is, is 30 year old is young men? 30-year-old ain't no young? <laughs> with this young man... So when you say young man, I'm expecting you to get somebody that's either 18 or 20. 30 years old is not no young man. And here we go. Victim number two. He ain't no victim, dude, if you do it voluntarily. So wait a minute, you're saying that the other guy is a victim? Wait, wait, wait. Victim number two? So you're saying that the other clown is victim number one? He's not a victim. He did this willingly. If you do something willingly, you're not a victim idiot recent member of bond and jesse's latest known purported victim i started going to bond around may 2020 2020 uh this was during the coronavirus lockdowns everything as soon as they opened back they were doing um live uh, broadcasted uh no in-person church for like oh two months or two weeks or something like that but as soon as it opened up i went that was May 2020. Um, the, Jesse, what he likes to do in the church is he goes around first timers. He goes around first timers and says, introduce yourself. What's your name? You know, how'd you find? All churches do that. All churches do that. All organizations do that because they want you to feel at home. That's nothing out of the norm. That's nothing out of the, out of the usual. This is pretty normal. We, especially in churches. At every church I visit, when they, I usually have to fill out the visitor form before I come in there. Or if they say we have any visitors, please stand. And we have to stand. Like, I don't understand why you're making it seem like it's a big deal. Find us. Where are you here? Um, the first thing I said, I said, my name is Samuel. And uh, I'm here because, uh, you know, you helped me a lot. Uh, I, I went and forgave my mom. I went and forgave my dad. I had a lot of anger. And I just dropped that. And I feel way better now. I, I'm... Like, I'm, I'm really, you know, growing, and I want to thank you for it. 
Among him are three other alleged witnesses and victims who also chose to tell their stories. Samuel began his relationship with Jesse professionally, washing cars for him and doing other cleaning work at what they call the Bond House. The Bond House is where Jesse and several of his male staff currently live. And when Samuel began opening up to Jesse about his past, things got personal. I was molested as a boy, so I was like, Jesse, what do I do? Like, this is a uh, weighing heavy on me. What should I do? He said, forgive him, it's in the past. Our relationship progressed slowly closer and closer. I didn't suspect anything weird of it. There were certain times where he began hugging me where I was like, whoa, I've never been hugged by a man. Like, what was this? But I was like, this is, I get, he would just tell me like, you know, I just love you. So I'm like, I Wow, what a, what, the state of men today, when you think a hug, it's, it's, there's some, this alternative motive to a hug, a hug. Good gosh. Yeah, I, I get you, you know, I love you too. But much like with Patrick Rooney, Samuel states things went from casually close to mortally sinful. So a Friday afternoon, uh, evening, I go to Jesse's house and I am sitting in his couch, relaxing, you know, I'm, I'm kind of avoiding the LA traffic. Wait, I just caught another lie. Hold on. I just caught another lie. They said that they all lived in the Bond house, which I thought was strange because when I interviewed Jesse, Jesse specifically said that a house that he purchased when he first came to California, he still owns it today, and he lives in there by himself. So you see, I caught them in another lie. I'm really good at listening to people. I'm, that's why I made a very good investigator <clears throat> when I was a part of the detective. The, the, briefly for the detective squad, I hated it. it was so boring. I'd rather get back on the streets as a police officer. But um, I listen to what people say, and I listen to their story. And the longer someone talks, the more they're likely to lie. Uh, or they'll expose themselves. Not Sorry, let me take that back. The longer somebody will talk, the more they'll tell on themselves. So here we have this person saying that they all lived in the Bond house. Jesse and these guys lived in the Bond house. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I hear him say, I went over to Jesse's house. How does that work? How do you go from you all were living in the Bond house together to you going over to his house? Let's make sure I, I heard that correctly. Friday afternoon, uh, evening, I go to Jesse's house. Yep, going to Jesse's house. So we caught this guy in a lie. Holy shit. And I am sitting in his couch, relaxing. You know, I'm, I'm kind of avoiding the LA traffic at the peak hour. So it's a good, it's a good deal. And I get to stay somewhere with someone that I respect, friend. So then by this point, we're already real comfortable with like hugging and, and all that stuff, you know, just hugging for long periods of time. I thought nothing weird of it. I guess it, my, my guard had already been let down completely. So, well, hot hugging long periods of time is very intimate. <laughs> he, I'm sitting on this couch. He kneels down in front of me, and then he wraps himself around his arms around my waist. And I'm like, okay, this is kind of weird. But uh, I'm like, Jesse, why are you doing that? He's like, I, I just love this music. Holy smokes, it's so distracting. <laughs> it's. It's like it's like they're trying to turn this into an erotica, of uh, erotica show or something like this. This is a very, it it's a little porny the type of music I'm listening to right now as this guy is talking. What's with the music? This one saying they over they overproduced this video. It's just so. This one saying people are gonna forget about this stupid thing in two weeks. Watch, watch, mark my words, mark my words. Okay. Whew. Cause the music was getting on my nerves. I love you so much. And I'm like, okay, I guess. I was just like this. So then he starts rubbing. The music is type of, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> the music is so porny. It's like, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for Jesse to walk through the door. So what's up? Anybody order a pizza? <laughs> Okay, 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 all right, all right, here we go, here we go. My thighs, and I'm like, okay, what is he doing? Like, it's kind of crazy. And then he starts rubbing my uh, genital area, and I'm like, uh, what's happening right now? And then he, uh, and then he pulls down my pants, and then I'm like, 
I'm shocked. I'm not saying it. Okay, if you're sitting down, you have to lift yourself up in order for him to pull down your pants. Also, you are a grown ass man who's 31 years old. You, if you did not want him to do that, if right now, so far, I'm not believing anything that any of these guys are saying. You could have said stop. You could have said no. But this one's saying they want to sit up here and say they're a victim, but you actually volunteered to do all this stuff. This was consensual. You cannot claim the victim if this was consensual, idiot. Anything, I'm like, my face is like, whoa, what the hell is happening right now? No, you didn't, because you, you had to lift up in order to get your pants down to your ankles or knees. From there, Jesse instructed Samuel to go into his so-called meditation called the silent prayer. And he's like, doubt all thoughts. All thoughts are lies. Everything Satan is telling you is a lie. And I'm like, okay. But inside is telling me, hey, you, this is not good. Um, what, are, what are you doing? Uh, what are you allowing him to do? Samuel describes Jesse abusing the supposed meditative state, trying to convince Samuel to ignore the traumatic sexual experience occurring. It went on for a few minutes. He would uh, get up, walk away. I could hear him. I couldn't see him. Get up. He would get up, walk away. I could hear him. Get up, walk away, touch it. Get up, walk away, touch it. And I was like... So you still had your pants down the whole time? He would get up and walk away, but you still you didn't think not one time to pull your pants back up. Dude, stop it, dude. Just stop it, man. It was going on. So then I opened my eyes and then I'm like, uh, what, that, what just happened? Another alleged victim was Trayvon Chapman, who in 2015 told his friend, now 43-year-old Armand Martikian. Once again, hearsay. This person told me that, and he is not victim number three. If you have consensual sex with Jesse, if that was to be true right now, so far, everybody's talking. I don't believe them. But so far, this they're always going by hearsay. And they're not getting the person that actually said, hey, this happened. And you're not a victim if you have consensual sex. That Jesse molested him. Well, the first thing came out of his mouth uh, that Jesse's homosexual. And I said, How do you mislead? You can't molest a stupid oh, man! If you are consensual, you can't. That is not. Oh my God, these. Milo's such. I swear. This, by the way, this is all Milo's doing. Milo's so low IQ. That's what I'm saying. He, he, him and this other white boy, I, don't, I forgot what he is. Porky here. We'll call him Porky. They came up with this. They came up with this. This this story they're in a hotel room right now you can tell you mean tell me y'all couldn't even afford a studio y'all actually had to get a hotel room this is like a cheap hotel room too because there is no uh peak hole there's no peep hole down there this was so low low budget low budget hey you know you can't be saying this you know like he's all against it is a, you know, straight conservative man who, you know, this is like what you're saying is bizarre, you know, it doesn't make sense. But at the same time, it kind of struck me as a truth. What this guy was saying, he was explaining the incidents, like certain acts that they would do. They had some nicknames, Jesse had nicknames, for, you know, uh, say, instead of telling what the act is, he say named it oral massage, according to Trayvon. Armand tried to tell Jesse what Trayvon said, and he just dismissed it. I went to Jesse. I said, Jesse, I bumped into Trayvon, and he was talking bad things about you. The moment I said that, his first response was, oh, he's on drugs. When he said he's on drugs, shivers went down my spine, like, uh-oh, aren't you going to ask what he said about me? Trayvon has since disappeared. Like, oh my None God, of the somebody just bought a t-shirt. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That was one of my alerts. Sorry. My bad. My bad. Somebody just purchased a t-shirt. I have an alert on here. Uh, donation alert when somebody buy a t-shirt. They don't even know I'm live, not live streaming. They don't even know I'm recording this. So I was like, wait a minute. That's me. Sorry about that. That was somebody. Anytime somebody buy a merch, anything they buy a t-shirt from my merch, it'll, they'll get that notice right there. And have any idea of his current whereabouts. Isn't that convenient that the person, that, that another person that alleged that Jesse did something on doing while he was a grown man cannot be found? 
though they assume he's still somewhere in L.A. Right. After this encounter, Armand began questioning his own relationship with Jesse. And then I had a flashback. Back in the day, it was such an insignificant flashback. thing that it never stayed in my memory, but for some reason, the flashback had when I was in a private counseling, uh, he kind of gestured me, let me see down there, uh, pointing at my, referring to my, you know, down there as in my private. Not knowing what, what it was about, I'm at late, very late. Thank God the music stopped. Things at that moment, you know, like kind of got tricked into it, pull my pants forward where he kind of look at it. But at the same time, I'm thinking like maybe he's trying to see if I'm shy. He's trying to help me overcome shyness because I was a little shy, you know. I didn't know what to make of it. I remember saying, if somebody sees us from outside, they're going to think we're gay, I said. Later, I looked back, thought that the fact that I said, if somebody sees us, they're going to think we're gay. He kind of probably thought that... uh Okay, he's too aware. I'm not gonna advance any longer. So how are you the victim? How are you the... <laughs> oh my God, dude, you guys, this, is, this thing is such trash. How are you the victim? How are you the victim? If nothing sexual happened, you imbecile, and the only reason you're there is to speak upon some other black guy who you can't find, who you're saying told you that Jesse did so-and-so, so-and-so to him. <sighs> All right, let's look. I got two more to go. Former Bond House manager, 50-year-old Robert Santner, alleges he witnessed similarly strange behavior in 2021 between Witness. Jesse and current Bond producer James Haig. What? What I witnessed him, him and Jesse, were hugging and hugging each other intensely, uh, rubbing up, rubbing each other's shoulder down stuff. And he came to the point where I actually saw him kissing him on the cheek, kissing him on the cheek and stuff on the hallway, and talking all kinds. I can't remember what the words he said, but there were a lot of giggling, a lot of giggling in the hallway in his James room. And then there was even one time that just really shocked the living the hell out of me as I went to the laundry room and stuff. I mean, after I checked, the, took the laundry out. And then when I got out and there was a door open in Jesse's room and um, there I saw Jesse was sitting in the bed and while James Hake was <clears throat> wrapped around bed sheets completely around like a burrito with his head sticking out. And Jesse was like embracing him and hugging him and stuff. And then kiss. What? Hold on. <laughs> Sorry guys, I gotta rewind this. How do you go from a studio to the bed sheets? Hold on. I, 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 d d d and then a the whole, <clears throat> I'm so uncomfortable what I'm about to say right now. Hold on. I, I gotta catch up with this lie. When I got out and there was an door open. Hold on. Where was he? The living the hell out of me. As I went to the laundry room and stuff, I mean, after I checked, the, took the laundry out. And then when I got out and there was a door open. Okay, so they must be in somebody's home. He said he's going to take the laundry out. Okay, so they're in somebody's home. So you go from the studio to the home. Okay. All right. So you're in somebody's home. Jesse's room. Jesse's room. And um, there I saw Jesse was sitting in the bed and while James Hake was... <clears throat> So dramatic. Wrapped around bed sheets, completely around like a burrito with his head sticking out. And Jesse was like embracing him and hugging him and stuff. And with then the door kissing open. him on the forehead. And I was like, uh, hey, are you, are you all right? Hake, to this day, is an ardent defender of Jesse and his ministry essentially helping him ostracize all the men accusing Jesse of homo predation. Santner also described an incident where Jesse attempted grooming him to see if he was a homosexual. Uh -huh. Like there was one night, okay? I was all by myself. It was like late at night after I came home. I'm so sorry, guys. I just don't believe none of these guys. I want to believe what they're saying. I want to so badly. And it's not that I don't believe that Jesse is gay or bi. It, it's not that at all. It's just that give me the hardcore evidence, not this. Let me tell you what I'll experience right now. Y'all are talking and, and you're doing all these accusations and there's no evidence behind your words whatsoever. From work, I was in the... There's not even circumstantial evidence behind your words. 
kitchen, you know, take, doing my own thing and stuff. And then suddenly there was Jesse appeared on the doorway, leaning against the doorway with his hand underneath his underpants. And he was like slowly massaging himself and was giving me a look and I, and I turned around and says, what the heck are you doing? And he was like giving me a smile and giggle and stuff and then walked away. I don't believe that. Another witness is Martin Francis, who's largely been leading the charge against Jesse's purported homo predation. He describes himself as one of Jesse's best friends. You may recognize Francis from a video with Jesse arguing with a Univision reporter at a Prop 187 rally in Los Angeles in 1996, a rally opposing the flood of illegal aliens entering the state. Are you all right? Are you okay? Oh, I, I'm feeling better than ever. Okay, so I question the mental state of this man. You've been busted in the head and you got blood dripping down and you're like, you feel better than ever. Okay, so automatically I'm thinking like something's wrong with you mentally. You're all right. Yes, I'm all right. Are you racist? Am I what? What, what are you, what are you thinking of these people this now? Why? Why are you stay you here? Said, are you racist? Am I racist? Yeah. No, I'm not a racist. Why do you ask that? But since learning of Jesse's dark secret, Francis has led several protests against Peterson's homosexuality outside of... So that was many years ago. And now you look like you've been... It looks like you've been going through some hard times now. I'm no, I don't want to blame it on drugs. I don't want to blame it on alcohol either, but you don't look like, like you used to. You look like a totally different person now. The Bond Studio. Jesse was confronted by him several times this year and refused to address any of the accusations of him preying on young men at Bond. Here's a video of Francis from March, facing off with him at what appears to be the post office across the street from the Bond studio. Tell them about you sleeping with your brother's wife. Your brother's wife. Tell them about you sleeping with your brother's wife. These gay men sleeping with women. Now, I don't know. I'm, I shouldn't even take Jesse's word for that. <laughs> but I don't know. Like, these guys are shady. I, I, I don't... Oof. Oh, that's nice. He wants me to tell them how I was sleeping with my brother's wife. That's fine. But Jesse... Oh, you didn't deny it. Oh, oh, you you did it. I didn't think you... I thought you was going to deny it. It's like, okay, uh, that, that didn't happen. Oh, you did do that. These guys are just, that. there's no honor among thieves, is there? Why will you not speak on your homosexual behaviors? Francis confronted him again in the back of the building with Armand Martikian in February, capturing it all on video. Jesse Peterson, I've known you for 25 years personally. Will you come, see he's not coming over to me, will you at least stand there where you feel safe and talk to me? Stand up on your porch with the door open and, and, and shout out to me. Why won't you talk to me? I've known you for 25 years. I've accused you of heinous things and you will not talk to me. You coward. Francis admits there were also a few clues that should have revealed Jesse was a homosexual long before he ever found out. He wanted to see if I was willing to have a Okay, I'm being nice. A homosexual relationship with him, of course, because hmm. that's what he was all about. He was about putting out feelers there and seeing who he could have sex with. These guys got And it didn't work with me because I'd not been molested as a boy. And so eventually I told him, look, Jesse, I'm just an angry guy and I don't like these long hugs and, and all this stuff we're doing, you know, at night. And did uh, he stop? Uh, where he would come into my bed and just lay with me, you know? He would come into your bed and just lay with you? Yes. And at one time even like put his hand underneath my underwear to go toward my genitals, right? He never got there because I, he could see I wasn't getting excited. So you let him put his hand down your underwear, okay? So here's the deal. Wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. <laughs> You're not gay. You're not, you don't, you don't do that. You're just an angry man, but you allow Jesse to lay in the bed next to you. 
Okay, all right. You know, straight men do that all the time. I'm being sarcastic. So you let Jesse lay beside you in your bed. You let him put your hand, his hand in your underwear. And, and the reason why nothing happened is because you didn't get hard. You expect me to believe that? You know, don't get me wrong. There's a, a lot of people on the right are dumb as hell very dumb and very gullible but they're not that dumb and gullible to sit up here and think if this happened i don't believe it did but you're trying to say that if a bit you're like you let you the fact that you let someone let a grown man put his hand in your underwear you didn't say do what you're doing you 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 didn't say it you didn't you didn't talk about how you unbutton your pants or whatever you just let them just slide it on in there you just let it do it just let them do that and then you expect that nothing happened you expect me to believe that nothing happened because you didn't get hard dude she's just clowning you're just a liar man so he never got there he just like at the edge you know because you gotta invite the vampire in no you don't no you don't <laughs> i'm saying this as a woman Never, ever, 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 ever as a woman, how I, have I allowed a man to put his hands anywhere on my body sexually if I didn't want some? That's never happened. If I'm not interested in a man, he can't even touch the outside of my arm, let alone put his hand in my underwear. Don't have to let no vampire in. That's so stupid. This is a cope. Is, is what they say in the vampire movies. And it's sort of true. No, it's with not. Even psychic vampires like Jesse. And so... So now Jesse's gone from a predator to a psychic vampire. Got it. He was... Um, he would do those kind of tricks or or uh, put his hand around my back and uh, up on my chest and be hugging and all that kind of stuff just to see if maybe I could... get you know, And asking me if... Uh, uh, how does it feel? And it feels good, right? And all that kind of stuff. And I would meekly answer, yeah, it feels good. But uh, only because. So you lied to him. So I don't believe anything you said. I, if this happened, I believe that when Jesse put his hand down there, you got you got excited. I do believe that when he said this feel good, you were like, yeah, it does feel good because you really believe is he felt good. And the way you're behaving about stalking Jesse, sounds, you sound like a jaded lover. You sound like an ex-lover to me. When you're under that kind of uh, pressure, you just get... What pressure? If the answer that he wants, you're but you really like man. want to get the heck out of there. You're like ready to fly out of there like a bat out of hell. Jesse appears to have used every dirty trick in the book to silence him, allegedly trying to have Francis arrested for violating an unserved restraining order. I well, if he hasn't been served, that means, okay, let me tell you something about an unserved restraining order. If you have a restraining, you go to the magistrate court and then you file, you go to the judge and you basically sit, submit an application for a restraining order. At, but you have to have a police report first. So you had a police report with you and you, you file that. And the, the if she looks at the police report and she listens to you or he, uh, they will give you a restraining order and you have to tell them whether the police or the deputy sheriff can serve that person with a restraining order. If you don't have an address of that person, you have to wait until they show up to harass you in order to serve them. That's how they work. So just because you have an un unserved restraining order does not mean that the restraining order is not valid. The restraining order can still stay valid. Until you, it's still valid. And when you serve, then that's when you have a time period before you show up in front of the judge, before they decide to make it permanent or, uh, or they make it temporary based on some years. We'll go back to Phoenix and chill out with the relatives like I was doing before, and I'll be back on the 25th. Okay. 25th. Yeah. Fortunately for you, this is in a sealed envelope. Fortunately for you, this, is, this was in a sealed envelope today, it, it, if it hadn't been. 
you would have been going to jail. Ah, so that's what happened. So he, so exactly, I was right. He hasn't been served, so he's being served now. So therefore, when he violated the uh, the uh, restraining order, he would have been arrested. But since he has not been served and he was he violated a re restraining order, they're now giving it to him. So therefore, if he violates it from then this point on out, then he will go to jail. Yes, if it was already served, you had already seen this. Would be one to see, yeah, Church see? Militant asked every go. single victim and witness if they thought Jesse would continue sexually preying on men, and they all had the same answer. Well, yeah, I there's would say yes. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt that there's current victims. None of these guys are credible. None of these guys are credible. None of these guys are credible. They're, you're just talk so here we got. We're almost to the completion of this video, and there has not been not one concrete evidence you don't even have any um circumstantial evidence you don't even have it, a smoking gun nothing you just have a lot of jaded ass men telling myself oh, jesse did this to me jesse did that to me and i'm a victim even though i had consensual with sex i think for sure jesse allegedly accuses these men of harassment but well, the one that got served is harassing him. He's going outside his job. He's stalking him. He's walking. He's watching him go to the post office. Now, the other three, I don't have any idea about them being um, harassing. But that, that, that one with the fucked up forehead is definitely harassing him. Some members of his own congregation disagree, like former bond house tenant Fabian Asensio. The harassing is just an excuse for, um, you know, trying to shut people down. Bond has been a nonprofit church for all these years. He's lied and collected a lot of money from that church, from people saying that, you know, he's been a hidden homosexual. There's a, there's plenty of evidence for it. There's no reason for us. Yeah, but that's not Jesse. <laughs> Once again, y'all confuse it. Y'all want to sit up here and talk about one guy and say, well, that this guy did it, so Jesse did it. ...to make up anything. So for someone to be out there in the alley and talking and trying to wake up the employees and say, hey, what are you doing? Why are you still working for this liar? That's totally within our First Amendment rights. So that is harassment. That's still harassment. Sure, it could be a First Amendment, but you just admitted that you... Listen what he just admitted. That's harassment, idiot. Look at what he just says. Th these guys are so fucking low IQ. He's been a hidden homosexual. There's, a, there's this, plenty of evidence this. for it. There's no reason for us to make up anything. So for someone to be out there in the alley and... Somebody to be out there in an alley talking and trying to wake up the employees and somebody out there in the alley trying to wake up the employees. Someone to be out there in the alley and talking and trying to wake up the employees and say, hey, what are you doing? Say, hey, what are you doing? Why are you still working for this Why are you liar? still with this guy? That's totally within our First Amendment rights. And that is still harassment. <laughs> Somebody can constantly harass me about going out on a date with them over and over and over again. It is in their First Amendment right to say, please date me, please date me, please date me. And I goes, no, leave me alone, leave me alone, stop it. And they continue to do that. That's still harassment, but it's still their First Amendment right. Two, two things could be right, correct at the, at the same time. Two things can be right at once, okay, idiots. Jim Valerio, longtime donor and friend of Jesse's, also pushed back at his defenders. And for those of you people who are still supporting this... How do you... Hold on, hold on. If he's a long-time donor, then show some evidence that he's donated money. See, Milo, let me tell you something, sweetie. You met the right one. You are not credible whatsoever. I, I know how to poke holes through your bu bullshit right here. So here it is. You're going to call somebody a donor, but you don't provide any... Um, bank statements, any super chats, uh, uh, printouts, anything to show that he actually, this person right here actually donated to Jesse Lee Peterson show or into Jesse Lee Peterson's uh, super chats or Patreon. I don't know what, what uh, Jesse has, but you, but you're just saying this is a donor and you don't provide any evidence. It's, we're supposed to take this person as a credible witness. Shut up with this. So dude, really? fraudulent, hypocritical, uh, serial, predator homosexual you are going to pay a price for that that is a stain on your soul when you meet your creator 
Period. Oh, Cut. These people are crazy. This isn't even the first. It, this, looking at these people make me realize maybe I should stay agnostic. <laughs> They're crazy, man. They're crazy. First incident. Jesse was embroiled in a homosexual scandal in October 2020 after his Twitter account liked a gay pornography. I remember movie. this now. Now, this is a smoking gun. Finally, finally, they actually get a smoking gun. This is a smoking gun. After the gun. tweet was left up for hours, Jesse's account was immediately locked down and set to private. I remember this. One caller on his I daily JLP show broadcast tried asking him about it, and Peterson hung up on him. Hold on, let me just say this. We remember this. We remember uh, uh, Alex Jones having uh, T-Girl porn on his phone. Same thing with Nick Fuentes having T-Girl porn on his phone. So we remember this. Yes, these are smoking guns. Now, this is the only credible evidence that they have. You guys saved that for the last part to sit up here and you show all this other lies and then you show something that actually happened that was act that actually did. did I remember this. I was actually on Twitter when this happened. I said, this is before my Twitter account got suspended. I remember this when it happened, dude. Did you lock your Twitter account because you got caught liking a yeah, gay he did. Fast post? Yeah, he did. Amazing. Do you think I handle my own Twitter stuff? Yes. Oh, somebody else was did it? How come you locked the account? None that of your business. What the, what the? Are you homosexual or something? <laughs> no, but it doesn't really why matter. You a, why that. are you such a, a beta man? What, you know all that stuff that's going on oh, is not Jesse, real. You got caught, but you're being you a girl caught. right now. What making you be a girl right now? Jesse got There's caught nothing right wrong now. with it, Jesse. There's know. nothing wrong with you being a girl? They were, they were in. Goodbye. On top of those we spoke to, there were several other anonymous alleged victims Church Militant was made aware of, who refused to speak with us per their devotion to Peterson and his so-called ministry. Right. Jesse continues to deny his own actions to his congregants. Because you guys ain't got no daggone dog smoking. That's the only one smoking gun, and it had nothing to do with you guys. It had everything to do with his Twitter. This is a, this, that right there happened. I saw it. I remember it. That happened. Just like that was around when the Alex Jones thing happened. I, I remember this. So, yes, that happened. So, these guys are just... Everything else, you could have you could have kept the testimony of the other guys. That was that did nothing, really. And his fans, shutting down any victims who stand in his way. For Church Militant Special Assignment, I'm Joseph Enders, special Detroit. Assignment. These people are freaking... These are fraud. They're frauds. They're frauds. This was a okay. So let me just give my conclusion to this. This was a nothing burger. Absolute nothing burger. Uh, the only actual evidence that they have that Jesse uh, could be a homosexual. He could be gay. The only the only evidence is the whole thing of him liking a porn video on Twitter. That actually happened. Other than that, everything else is like there's no evidence for it. It's just hearsay. There's not even circumstantial evidence. I don't believe it what whatsoever. But anyway, <laughs> let me know what you guys think by leaving a uh, comment below this video. Don't forget to give it a like. And uh, yeah, I'm just this is a nothing burger. This is not going to stop Jesse for being. Uh, this is not going to stop Jesse from from doing his thing. He's still going to be famous. People are still going to support him. I'm going to still support him. Okay, Jesse. Just a uh, Jesse. I like watching Jesse for the laughs. That's it. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about his sexuality. Even if any of this is true, I don't care. This is consensual with grown-ass man, and that's it. But anyway, let me know what you think about this, and I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Later, taters.